Well, hey there, everybody, and welcome back. It's Dark Souls Remastered, Episode 3. I am Fox with Foxio Games. You're watching me, and I'm, I'm desperately trying to get this cat not to jump on my lap while I'm playing the game. I'll just get too warm. You guys know how it is. I, I know I told you that I was going to run down and grab that great scythe in the catacombs or wherever it is. I didn't. I forgot. And for that, I am truly deeply sorry. I think we got everything we need here. Uh, one of the other things I wanted to do was go ahead and uh, respond to some of your comments. I thought that would be a uh, good idea since you guys take the time to comment on my videos. I do appreciate that. It means a lot to me. So we'll see what happens with this new format. And I just remembered that there's a bunch of torch-wielding maniacs here. So, uh, <laughs> by the way, if you didn't know, those guys can be really tricky. You know what, if we need anything from Sparkly, Snuggly, whatever that bird's name is, we will come back for it later. Let's curl up like a ball. That's what I do when uh, life gets really hard, just curl up like a ball. I'm kidding, don't do that. That's not helpful. Unless, you know, you're one of those types that needs a safe space where you can go cry. Today's drink of choice is the same as the last time and the time before that. Nothing has changed with the drink of choice, really, other than the fact that... Um, it's a different brew. It's obviously not the same brew. Bro. Here we go. Let's do it. I'm pushing it down in the French press. It is black coffee. Ground from the beans. Espresso beans. Starbucks espresso. The darkest I can get, as far as I can tell. I know there are darker beans out there somewhere that I have yet to find. Let's go ahead and pour it into the mug. And that... This coffee poured in a mug, ready to go for your tasting pleasure. When last we left off, I had actually picked up some stuff from the Undead Asylum, the Northern Undead Asylum, to be specific. Let's make sure we don't have any Firekeeper's souls just lingering. Okay. And now, I believe it is time to take a trip down to Quaylag's domain. The infamous, the horrible, the awful. No. You know what? Let's go to the depths. Why would we skip the depths? I can skip the depths because I have the magic key or whatever it's called. But uh, yeah, let's go to the depths, actually. I want to go through the normal process here. And then I think we're going to go into Blight Town through the usual route you're supposed to take that I don't take. I usually take the back way in because it's easier. At least that's what I tell my girlfriend. That's what I tell all the ladies. And we'll uh, we'll see about uh, what we can do with this. What's, you know, easiest way is down here. It's been a while, guys. You can tell. And when I say it's been a while, I mean the video game, not... Well, never mind. Let's take a sip of this coffee. And just how black dark is it? Oh, that's dark. All right. Up we go, heading towards the depths. The depths is where we can find the gaping dragon. People have some comments on the appearance of the gaping dragon. I don't share those views. I, I don't really don't see the gaping dragon in any way, shape, or form looking similar to a woman's genital area. And if it does, you need to uh, find a different woman. Something's wrong with that one. I'll tell you that right now. We're going to take the front door into Blight Town. It is longer. It is more difficult. There's a good chance we'll die just because there's toxic dart shooting creeps. But it's a way I don't normally take, so it'll be fun to go through that way. And since I've been away from the game for so long, I may actually have a little trouble figuring out exactly where to go. I've done playthroughs of this game so many times, uh, dozens, literally dozens of playthroughs. And I kind of wonder if I've hit the 100 mark yet. I haven't been keeping track. I don't even know how many hours I've invested in the game because I've played online and offline, which throws off some counters on some of the systems. I've also played on the 360. I played on the PC. I played on the PS3. I played on the Nintendo Switch, the remastered. I played the PC remastered. So that's a lot of different systems. So it, it it's pretty tough to like keep track of all of that all across the board. I could take some guesses, but they would just be get. What am I doing? Oh, I'm glad I didn't accidentally uh, waste anything. Did I? Did I waste anything on this? This is not going to be my final armor set, by the way. 
It's just really not. I did waste one on it, darn it. Well, I found out we can equip that. What about the gargoyle helm? Probably not. Oh, wow. We can. That's that's kind of cool. Probably not this, though. Really? I like it. Are there any boss weapon sites? That is a good question. Oh, shoot. Oh, shoot. Oh, shoot. We're going to hide here and chug. Although, I think he could probably hit me. Let me see. Yep. <laughs> that was a test, guys. I meant to do that. Since I don't have any need for what this guy drops, I'm not going to grab it at the moment. And I'm going the wrong direction, aren't I? Why would I? Oh, well. Let's, uh, let's keep going this way. I didn't uninstall Reshade, though I installed the newer version of Reshade. I don't know if it makes any difference. I meant to uninstall Reshade as well so you guys could see this game in its original splendor. I do like the rolling R1 on this. It's a nice swipe, so it covers quite a bit of ground. There are some items we can pick up back here since I came this way accidentally. Sometimes I go into autopilot, but my autopilot just isn't what it used to be. Did you see that, fellers? That was pretty clever. I actually didn't think I'd pull that off. I thought for sure I was going to get slammed by one of them before I completed that little twirl. The signature move of the halberd, I must say. And nobody can actually sit down here, can they? Um, sit down here. Nobody can actually um, warp to this, not sit down. Obviously, you can sit down at it. I don't think that's warpable, even in the new version, but, uh, oh well. That's okay. This one close enough. Emilio Montoya. <clears throat> Is that from Princess Bride? Is that from Princess Bride? Is that a Princess Bride meme? Is this memes? Ooh, the sound of that coffee really hit the spot. He says, yes, I actually did not intend for the sound of the pouring coffee to come through, but it did. And, and come through, it, it certainly did. It was just amazing. Just a great experience. I love the sound of coffee pouring. The sound of me sipping the coffee. The sound of the coffee spilling onto the floor. No, not that one. Not the spilling part. Oh, he's still alive. After all of that, still alive. The Partisan is an excellent spear, so... <clears throat> excuse me. If you want to do a spear playthrough, uh, that's a great way to go. I would recommend making a run here as soon as possible to grab the spear. And uh, we got the uh, knight set over here. There's also the knight set by the water, or the elite knight set, rather. Which one is elite and which one's knight? Is this the elite knight set? We'll go get it. We'll go see what the dealio is. Wow. Okay. All right, now. All right, now, y'all. Let's do this. Okay, there we go. One thing that is a little frustrating about this game is that, depending on the weapon, sometimes you can't quite get the right angle to hit an enemy, but in, obviously in real life you'd be able to point the weapon down a little more, little bit more or up or whatever. I have tubes, says love this game, I might get it for the PS4 one day. Hey, get it for the PC or the Nintendo Switch. The Switch is the, uh, well, least beneficial version. Gosh darn it. Uh, that's because it's in 30 frames per second. That's just not as good as 60, guys. Frame rate is better, higher, as a general rule. The only exception is if uh, is if your display can't show the higher frame rate, then it doesn't matter. And dead. <clears throat> Thanks for playing. It was a great time. Great time was had by all. Which Beatrice? I did a playthrough, by the way. With which Beatrice's outfit and, and uh, staff. So check it out if you care to. It's called the Sorceress Playthrough. Berlioz Andre says, Hey yo, Fox, why don't you do some PvP like the good old days? And Orlando has a subscriber. Subsider? Low level? Subsific? I don't know. <laughs> Low level community DS3. 
Guys, in Township is active at 121.33. Forest is dying out, sadly. New generation scrubs don't know what's good. See, I love the forest because people just played there. They just fought. They didn't fuss over dueling most of the time. They didn't have a heart attack if you drank Estus. They didn't flip out if you did this or that. They just, you know, it was natural PvP, the way the game was meant to be played. Not these people expecting you to come in and have some sort of honor duel with some unwritten rules that everyone disagrees on. I mean, people don't agree what the unwritten rules are, so how can you have unwritten rules and not know exactly what they're supposed to be? I just realized that I should probably go with the, uh... uh Beatrice! You're killing me here, girl! Yeah, this is better for blocking magic. The drag- the crest shield. Those shots right there are actually pretty hard to dodge. Those are fairly easy to dodge if Beatrice isn't blocking me. And boy, does she like to sit around doing nothing half the time. Look how much it's blocking. It's just so awesome. And a one. And a two. And a three. And that, my friends, is game. I probably could have done that. Yep. That probably wouldn't would have went down about the same had I not had her. I would have killed the uh, butterfly on her first descent. But now, which Beatrice's stuff will show up later. Actually, I don't know if you have to um, employ her for her stuff to show up later in the game. But now we can pick her up in Anor Londo. New Londo, rather. Sorry. New Londo. And what's a new Londo? Well, let me tell you something. It's Londo, but new. The Four Kings, that's who. Marcus B says, good to have you back, Fox. It's good to be back. I was gone because, as I mentioned in the previous two episodes, I was busy having my life torn to shambles and having everything ruined. No, I'm kidding. Um, well, I mean, yeah, I'm kidding. It wasn't ruined. Nothing got ruined. Well, hmm. <laughs> I won't go into the details, but boy does divorce suck because it is really not a system anywhere in any shape or form designed to benefit men in any way. It, it really is a meat grinder for men. Um, it sucks, but you know what? Uh, you, you can get through it. So it is quite the experience though if, you know, you're with a woman and you think you're it's like the one. She's the one for you and, and you imagine that this is going to be the long... Oh crap, I forgot to grab the uh, armor set. Trying to remember which is which. I think the Elite Knight set is over here. Let's go get it. I like that set. It's a great set of armor. It looks cool. It's very detailed. Looks really awesome. Without being like overly flashy like some armor sets are. It has great stats. Great poise. Everything. Really. I just love everything about it. Uh, we will... Let's see. We will hit the bonfire because we already respawned all those enemies anyway. So this will allow us a chance to level up. I think dexterity is going to be the bigger thing we want to focus on here in terms of having the, the scythe or the great scythe, whichever we settle on. But yeah, once once you have that experience of being completely betrayed, um, and, you know, I can't go into details. Uh, I will say that to my, uh, as far as I can tell, I don't think there was any sort of marital faithfulness betrayal, if you know what I'm talking about. I'm trying to keep this video from getting flagged. I, YouTube likes to flag it if you talk too much about certain topics, like topics involving SEX or whatever. So I'm trying to be vague in what I say, but you guys get the drift. Um, not that it would have mattered, really. It doesn't, because, you know, if your relationship is is done, if it's gone, if, if it's over, it really doesn't matter who they're with at that point. Um, as long as they're not, like, bringing them to the marital home and causing a disturbance and stirring up trouble that way. I mean... Getting worked up over your significant other, quote unquote, cheating on you is a very beta trait, I think, for men. And it's it, it's a natural trait for both men and women. It's very natural for women. But, you know, jealousy doesn't become you, I don't think. So a little bit of jealousy is always probably healthy. Always probably. That's such a millennial thing to say. I'm not even a millennial. Um, 
I would say if you had no jealousy at all, mm, you don't know what a relationship is. But if you're very jealous of a relationship that's pretty much already fallen apart and you're angry that they cheated, I mean, it's over at that point. Just who cares? It's over. Once it's over, it's over. You just move on and, um, you know, you don't sit around lamenting it and crying over it and all that jazz. I mean, if you need to take that time off by yourself to grieve what was lost, then that's fine. But I think in the vast majority of cases, what you're grieving is not what you think you're grieving. You're grieving the, the, the fantasy that you had, the fantasy that never was, what you thought you had that you didn't. That's what you're grieving. You didn't actually lose anything. You just came to terms with reality. And I think that is still a very hard thing for a lot of people. Um, I think it's very difficult to come to terms with reality. So I had to come to terms with the fact that I was in a relationship with a woman for a long, long time. Longer than some of you have been alive, I'm sure. Uh, and she never really cared about me. Never truly loved me. And that's fine. Um, that's okay. You know, it hurts a little bit at first, but you get over it and you move on. So, somebody commented that they thought I was giving off, quote, uh, what'd they say, broken boy vibes. And uh, I'm not going to say that I didn't, I wasn't broken at all. I think there's a certain element of brokenness to any failed marriage, even if you don't really care that much. I've been forgetting to drink my coffee. Gotta drink it while it's hot. Get it while it's hot. There's some things you gotta experience while they're still hot. Coffee's one of them. Women, too. Women's one of them. So, the most important step that a man can go through is to realize, you know what? There are plenty of women out there. There is no special one for you. There is no significant other above all others. There is no, this is the best I ever had. I'll never get anything better, blah, blah, blah. And, oh, this is my destined soulmate. And that kind of stuff is how men get caught up in, in this. And that that's how they end up getting arrested for DV whether they did it or not, they're just hanging around the woman too much, giving her too much opportunity to lie or make up stories or for him to get angry and do something. Uh, or, you know, if she quote cheats on him, Oh shoot. Then, uh, he, he just gets so angry and jealous that he feels like he's justified in hitting her, which, you know, violence is not an answer there. It's just not an answer. It doesn't do anything. It doesn't do any good to get violent. So, oops. I love how you hit him do significant damage, and he just sits there for a second, and he's like, mm, okay, I will jump up. So, what we got here are two of these very close together. And you want to activate one without the other, but at this point, what I might go ahead and do is just run and grab that item, because why not? Yep, that is the Elite Knight set. Awesome. Funny that both Knight sets are in the same area. I don't know if I ever knew the lore behind it. But if you do, certainly mention it in the comments section below. So, as you've noticed, or, or if you're new, you may not notice as much, but anyone that's been in uh, any of my stream live streams or anyone that's been watching my playthroughs will know that I, I will talk a lot about just life issues, general life issues, general stuff, and that's just kind of how it is on my channel. So, if you were looking for just gameplay conversation game conversation only uh, not the best place for you to be i hope you stay and enjoy the conversation but just know that i talk about a lot of different topics nothing is off limits for the most part uh, we do talk about some controversial topics maybe even political Woo! Um, so be ready it might happen i probably i think it already has happened so whatever because i mean there, there's some great stuff there's some great fodder for conversation right now. There's the impeachment uh, circus going on, which is a, a, a huge joke. I mean, it's just laughably stupid. There's nothing there. It's not going to happen. Anyone, if you don't like Trump, that's fine. Uh, there's a lot of reasons not to like him, obviously. I've got my own reasons why I feel like he hasn't done enough. He hasn't really lived up to all of his promises, as you know, all politicians will inevitably fail. But I think he could have done so much more. But at the same time, I mean, you have to look at what the alternative was. I think Hillary was the worst, probably the worst candidate ever to run. Certainly in my lifetime that I'm aware of. Um, Biden is looking like a total joke. Obviously. Um, but there are people out there that believe that the Democrats are purposely putting 
just complete and utter failures out there to run against Trump to make sure that Trump wins. Because some people believe in selected, not elected. I'm not quite there yet. <laughs> um, I could see it. I'm not going to completely deny it. I'm not going to say, oh, no, 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 everything is just the way it looks. You know, I know that the news regularly lies to us. I know that the government regularly lies to us. I know there are narratives being pushed. There are uh, covert, secret operations run by the CIA. And so, I, you know, that's those are real. Those are very real. But I don't know how far I want to go without having enough evidence to back it up. The bolder the claim, the more evidence I'll need for it. I think that's a, a good place to be. So anyway, back to relationships. This is especially true for my male viewers, which is probably what? All of you? 99% of you? If you're a female viewer, sound off in the comment section below so the thirsty betas can hit you up in your DMs. Don't do that, guys. Don't hit up women you don't know in DMs. DMs are direct messages or personal messages or inbox or whatever. So, Folon Rupist asks, did your wife beat you? You're really radiating some serious broken boy vibes with that MGTOW rant. So for those that don't know, MGTOW means men going their own way. It's a movement that essentially, although it depends on who you ask, essentially eschews relationships with women. Uh, no, they're not gay. No, they don't advocate getting with men. They're, they're straight men. They're heterosexual men. They just don't believe that women are worth it anymore, and they would advocate for using dolls and toys and personal, you know, uh, pleasure objects for themselves. Where am I going? Oh, yes, yes, yes. It's all coming back to me now. They would say that this is a woman's world. It's it's essentially like the gynocracy. It's it's designed for women, by women. And to a certain extent, that is true. Uh, you notice that feminism has done a lot to pervert society and twist society over to what women would want and what women think they want, at least. Um, women certainly reign when it comes to family courts. Uh, you'll notice that despite the narrative being pushed about a gender a wage gap. When young women are earning more than their male counterparts. Women are more likely to graduate high school. Women are more likely to go to college. And women are getting more of every single degree, except maybe PhDs. There's, there are conflicting studies on that. But it does appear that women are getting more of all of the degrees. They're more highly educated. They're earning more. And they're rising to positions of power in a lot of different organizations. Companies are more than happy to hire women that are underqualified just so that they can kind of show, oh, look how progressive we are. We hired a woman. Women are being put in positions that they're not qualified for, that men would not be picked should they have the same qualifications. Again, to push the whole, look how progressive we are. Um, you'll notice that more and more women are being put in as CEOs and the heads of tech firms. That is being done in order for the tech firm to kind of... Uh, virtue signal how progressive they are even though you'll notice that these women do not have qualifications that would seem to qualify them to be in those positions and certainly they, they don't they don't and we see what they do like the lady that was in reddit i can't remember her name there's an asian woman uh that was put in charge of reddit and she pretty much almost destroyed reddit in the short time she was there and, and you know that's what happens when you have unqualified people you put them in positions of power like that they screw it up because they don't know what to do. They start doing stupid things. Like they start enacting, you know, social justice, liberal policies that belong in politics, not in corporations. Because it doesn't necessarily generate money. Corporations are about generating money. They're stockholders, you know. You have customers. And you don't tell your customers that they're all sexist, racist, misogynist pigs. That typically doesn't work very well for generating more revenue for your company. It hurts the bottom line in general. You know, the only problem we have with this halberd is the one-handed moves just suck. They're slow and, and cumbersome, you know? So it's just best if you can two-hand it, although two-handing with this guy is a little risky. Oh, shoot. <laughs> that was a total failure. I missed on both accounts. Oh, shoot. I meant to backstab him, but he just stood there and took it. What a champ. What a beta. That was a beta, Black Knight. I'm going to move this microphone just a bit. I think I might have to tailor the audio down a bit. I think I've been talking too loudly. I'm very animated sometimes. All right. 
Now, Dark Souls Freak says, I have to respectfully disagree with you about MGTOW. To me, MGTOW is more than just rejecting romantic relationships with and commitment to women. It's about being my own person. Even if all the family court laws change tomorrow, I still would not want to get married. And, and it goes on. I'm, I actually can't click the read more on the comments because I'm playing this game and I don't want to alt-tab out and uh, have that be on the, on the uh, playthrough, on the recorded footage. Yeah, excellent point. Although I think uh, the red pill movement in general or the manosphere movement in general just covers a lot of that. Like you kind of have your own frame. You have your own setup. You live your own life by your own rules within context. I mean, you don't want to, uh, as, as Rolo Tomasi would say, there are a lot of alphas in prison. You don't want to be that kind of alpha. And alpha is like a placeholder term. Um, nobody is truly a full alpha or full beta. It's, it's just a term that basically means, oh, I almost had that guy till he jumped away. Um, if I had upgraded this one more time, I would have killed that guy in the first shot. I think we're going to get a dragon coming at us, aren't we? Yeah. Or a drake, rather. Sorry, guys. It's a drake. But when it shows up, I tell my son it's a dragon because he's not going to know drake versus dragon. Though I got to tell you, drake is a really cool last name. I wish my last name were drake. Fox Drake. Williams is kind of a boring last name. Um, what is what is this? Is this a Drake? Oh, we just had that conversation. Look, I have one step out on the bridge and he doesn't notice. I bet he's partially blind. He probably doesn't have his glasses on. He probably wears bifocals when he reads. Now, the dragons are not totally extinct, y'all. There are still dragons... Seath the Scaleless Dragon. Mm, am I right? You know it. Mm, oh well. <laughs> I really don't want the Drake Sword anyway. If you cut that tail, you'll get the Drake Sword. It is a really, really good sword early on. It does not scale. But it's a good sword early in the game. Uh, you will grow out of it as you get further into the game. But the R2 on it, the two-handed R2 has a special attack. It, it drains durability, but it's a really cool, like, uh, area of effect attack that goes in a straight line. If you've never tried it out, definitely give it a shot. It will probably carry you until about Anerlando. I wouldn't take it beyond Anerlando. What are we doing? Let's slide. In early versions of this game with DS Fix, the original with the DS Fix on PC. If you slid down there, you would sometimes slide through the floor because of the uh, frame rate modification if you turned it to 60 FPS. I think I've told you before, I consider 60 FPS to be the bare minimum acceptable frame rate for an action game. Uh, I don't say that jokingly, not half jokingly. I'm 100% serious. Uh, I think 30 FPS is just not good enough. It's subpar. It just No action game should play at 30. But because of the the weakness of the consoles and because of the desire that these companies had to have better graphics, they allowed a lot of games to play at at, at 30. And that's just a shame. That, that should not have happened, but it did. And it still does to this day. Unbelievable, huh? We have the, the next generation, you know. I expected, well, I thought, I'd hoped that with the eighth generation of consoles, we would see the end of this 30 FPS bullshit. But nope. They, they still pushed it. They were still pushing graphics up, and the frame rate stayed low and pathetic. Anyway, I want to hear you guys' thoughts on relationships and all that, because uh, I can tell you. Oh boy, I can tell you. All the men that have gone into relationships thinking that, you know, I'm doing everything right. Uh, I'm a good guy. I'm a nice guy. Uh, I'm a good husband. You know, I'm taking care of the kids, and I'm working hard and earning money and staying out of trouble, and... And they think that'll be good enough to earn the respect and admiration of their wives. And they're finding out the hard way when the wives cheat, uh, divorce them. It's what we call divorce rape. Um, it's what happens to a lot of men when... What's this say? Dark. Mm, clever. I'll give it my rating. Excellent job, whoever wrote that. Uh, they get divorce raped. They get taken to court. They get screwed over. Guys mistakenly think, oh, you know what? I'm not going to pay for this expensive lawyer. Lawyer's not worth, you know, $100, $200, $300 an hour. I'm just going to do it myself. And they get screwed royally. Um, you know, they end up paying massive child support. She keeps the kids away from him like, you know, a narcissistic uh, psychopath that a lot of women become during divorces. A lot of women transpose. They project their hatred for the guy. 
their misguided hatred for the guy onto their own children. And they, they literally hurt their own kids trying to get at the guy. Um, because they just, that's what they do. It's sad. It happens all the time. But they will hurt their own children to try to hurt the man that they feel wronged them. Um, whether he did or didn't is irrelevant. You don't hurt kids to try to hurt someone else. That's just not okay. But they do it. And then, you know, they have to pay all this child support. She gets him for a whole bunch of alimony that he can't afford. He ends up losing everything he has. Is driving a shitty car. Barely sees his kids. He's working overtime just to try to pay his, his bills. Lives in his mom's basement. And she's out there living it up on government welfare with child support and alimony. And, and, and of course, you know, she lies to all her family and friends saying how horrible he was and how he beat her. And he did this and he did that. And, you know, maybe he beat her. But uh, the statistics in the, in, in the studies do not support the notion that men beat women more. They do tend to beat them more severely. And I think that's simply the result of men being bigger and stronger. So they tend to do more physical damage to a woman when they do beat her. But according to all of the studies, a meta-analysis of over 200 studies, men and women are equally likely to initiate acts of domestic violence. So they're roughly, not exactly, but roughly equally likely to be victims and suspects. Okay, so this right here is interesting. I don't want to risk going in without... Uh, without having a bonfire close by. So let's drop that. Although, you know what? As soon as we walk over here, it's going to disappear. We'll give it a second here, see if anyone picks it up. Uh, this, this isn't really that tough. The biggest problem is getting through the initial ambush. You walk in here, and this demon comes at you, the capper demon, with two dogs. The capper demon is no sweat whatsoever once you learn his moves. No sweat whatsoever. Virtually never going to die to the capper demon as long as you can kill the dogs. The dogs are the problem. And the biggest problem with the dogs is that they stun lock the shit out of you. So if you can get those dogs killed, then, then you're golden. If you can at least get one to start and then roll away and position yourself to defend against the second dog's attack. But when they all three come at you, and you miss time a dodge, you miss time, you know, your roll, you don't, you can't block it all because of the stamina or the shield or whatnot, uh, you will get uh, massacred, basically. <laughs> so even I die to it sometimes. Um, it's just, there's, there's, I don't know. It's difficult. Oh, shit. I mean, shoot. The other thing, too, when, when I was in my marriage, and it lasted a long time, like, I really tried to do everything I was supposed to do as a guy. I tried to be the nice guy, you know, blah, blah, blah. That's really not what you should do, and that's not what women ultimately want. They don't want you to be mean. Don't get me wrong. They don't want you to beat them. Well, I mean, maybe if you do, but don't. <laughs> no. If any woman wants you to simulate beating her, simulate assaulting her, anything like that, no, 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 no. Don't touch that with a 10-foot pole. It's a trap, y'all. You know the meme from uh, Star Wars. It's a trap. You want a good, stable woman, and I, I talk in generalities only, and that's because for a lot of reasons, I can't give too many specifics about my situation. My YouTube channel is not a platform to badmouth anybody. It's certainly not a platform to badmouth any, anyone that was in a, a previous relationship with me. Uh, I think it would be bad form to do that, but more so than that, I think, uh, I, I, I think... It, it just looks better overall if if you don't go around bad-mouthing your, your ex any more than necessary. Now, if your ex is going around spreading lies and rumors nonstop and you need to respond to that, well, there are ways to respond to it. And if you need to, you know, if, if that's what she's doing or he's doing, you eventually you may want to come out and say, okay, hold on, guys. I, I'm going to come out here and tell the truth. Look, if she wants to spill our personal business to you, I'm going to spill a little bit and let you know how... Um, she took advantage of me, she abused me, she did this, she did that, whatever the case may be for you. So, all I'm saying is, you need to be your own man, you need to stand up for yourself, you need to be a strong presence in your own life and have your own frame and have your own mission and goals, and you need to put your relationship with your children first in the event that your relationship with your uh, spouse or significant other falls apart. Uh, what you don't want to do is sacrifice everything for a woman. P 
period. Much less a woman that doesn't really care about you. If a woman doesn't care about you, plan your escape. Strategize your escape and get out in the least damaging way possible. I'm not going to tell you to be easy. If you got kids and real estate and retirements and all that, that hurts. It sucks. You're going to lose some money. I mean, I'd, I'm thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars into it. You know what I mean, guys? It's just it costs a lot to fight a bitter woman in a bitter contested divorce. It really does, and it sucks. But you have to do what you have to do. Um, one thing you should never do is be one of those guys that goes, I can't afford this. I just can't stand it. I give up. I surrender. You, she can have whatever she wants. That's what women count on, and that's what women's lawyers count on. And you just cannot give in to that kind of abuse. And it really is. It's emotional abuse. It's it's financial abuse. It's a sort of legal system abuse that lawyers will put you through. The lawyer's going to count on you as a man just giving up. You know? And that's not... Us as men, collectively, we need to fight for our own rights because like it or not and i'm not really an mra men's rights activist per se but men are losing a lot of rights women complain about rights this rights that. women have every single right that a man has in more women get 85 to 90 some percent of all primary custody battles they they end up the primary caregiver or the uh, primary parent or whatever they call it in your state they win the vast, vast majority of custody disputes. They keep children away from good, loving, uh, fit fathers in many cases. So, you know, to say that women are the ones that need to fight for rights is exactly backwards. If the news is out there telling you something, there's a very good likelihood that the exact opposite is the actual truth. That what the news is telling you is the complete opposite of reality. Now, one of the other problems with these dogs is that they love to jump away at just about the time that you would try to attack them. So they're very tricky. These dogs can be very tricky. Ooh, I like this. The camera is just ever so slightly in the fog wall. It's not obscuring your view, but it is making it all blurry and, and uh, looks like, you know, you're looking through really hot steam coming out of something. All right. I, I don't think we're going to find anything here. Let's chug... This would actually be a really good place to use the uh, gold pine resin. Or if you ran out of those, buy some charcoal pine resin from that merchant back there and use that. And the reason I suggest that is you really want to kill these dogs in one shot. You, um, With few exceptions, unless you're wearing super heavy armor, you can't afford to take more than um, one hit to, to kill the dogs. So let's try it, guys. Um... Let's end the episode with the death of these these horrible evil creatures. And we'll talk more about more stuff later. Golly, that that message. That message is going to get me killed. I can't believe that. That is so dumb. That message kept me from dodge rolling. Ridiculous. Drink. Oh, it's on now, buddy. You know, I don't need the uh, wolf ring anymore. I don't know if... Uh, do I have enough time to get it? Yes, I did it. Oh, shoot. Oh, shoot. Uh, I would like to Estus again, just to make sure we don't die. I don't want to take any risks here. By the way, when you come up here, he loves to jump. Be careful on this. Yeah, he can land on you. Not only that, but while jumping down, some of his swings will hit you midair. So just because you've dodged it doesn't mean... Or just because you've rolled off the edge doesn't mean you're safe. I probably... Oh, the Demon Great Machete. That is a rare drop from him here. I like it. I like it a lot. All right, let's... Uh, I'm not going to use it, obviously. It's a very, very heavy weapon. And it's... it they, The, the wind-up is ridiculous. Let me see if I can uh, two-hand it. So to show you the R2... The R, the two-handed R2 is insane. Mm. Watch. Nope. Okay, never mind. No, it's not going to do it. All right, whatever. Woodhead's broke. 
I love how it looks like there's a bunch of barbed wire wrapped around it. By the way, the gargoyle tail axe is not a halberd. It looks a little bit like one. It's not. It's not a scythe. And look at me grabbing a battle axe. Speaking of things that look like a halberd but aren't. Okay. So that's him. Now we can head into the depths. Or, you know what? Let's actually go back to the bonfire and use some different some different items here. Moral of the story of today, guys. Have your own frame. Have your own mission in life. Never make a woman your mission. Never, ever, ever seek out a woman as your mission in life. Never make a woman your mission. Never make a woman your focus. Never make a woman your goal. Always have your own goals. Do what you need to do. Start a YouTube channel. If you, if you want to go into game programming, get the career of your dreams, start your own business, write a book, uh, create your own website, whatever, whatever, you know, do your own podcast, whatever it is you need to do for yourself, build yourself first and let women come later. Women should not be your priority. Number one priority should be to take care of yourself, work out, eat right, do meditation, go to church, whatever it is that helps you spiritually, mentally, physically get right with yourself and, and, and in your mind. Uh, you need to be healthy physically, uh, financially too. You know, that's your job, your career, your finances. And you need to be healthy in your mindset. Don't, don't ruin what could have been a great relationship because you're not right in your mind. So think about it this way. Do you want to meet that that woman, the one of the women that can be right for you, not the right one, but one of the right ones. Do you want to meet a great woman that can be right for you and then totally screw it up because you're not in your right mindset at that time? Of course not. So don't do that. Get right with yourself first and then come back later for the, uh, the relationships. And if a woman just happens to come into your life as you're seeking out everything else, that's fine. Use that as an opportunity for for uh, a chance to, to start a relationship. And, and you know what? If a relationship ever starts to go sour, end it. That's it, you know? End it in the most amicable way possible and say, you know, I appreciate all the experiences. We had some great times together. Uh, I think it's time for us to move on. Pursue your mission in life. Do your thing. Be your own person. Because if you don't know who you are and you haven't established who you are, you can't, you can't figure out who you want to be with someone else. And you certainly do not want to be changing yourself to try to fit some woman because it won't work. She'll resent you for it and the relationship will end. And never, ever, ever, ever have a child with a crazy woman. You know what I'm talking about. One of the worst things you can do is have a child with a woman that's not mentally stable. And there are a lot of unstable women out there, particularly after they give birth. They, you don't always know what's going to happen, but you got to start out on the best foot possible. All right, just kind of taking a survey of everything I got here. No large Titanites yet, but that's fine. I think I will actually tackle Quelag with a plus 5 Halberd. I usually get to plus 10 before I tackle Quelag, but I want to get the Scythe from Sin's Fortress and upgrade that with my large Titanite shards rather than upgrade this and then move on from this as a weapon. Well, guys, I am Fox from Foxio Games. I thank you for joining me. I hope that you enjoyed this. I hope that you comment down below and we continue the conversation. It will probably be a, a focal point of this playthrough, the Dark Souls Remastered playthrough. My playthrough channel is no longer active. I don't know if I'll delete the whole channel, but I'm no longer going to be uh, uploading to it. So stay here at my main channel. Follow me on Twitter, Facebook, Mines, Gab, all those sites. Twitter is where I am primarily focused. So if you're going to follow me anywhere, make sure to do it on Twitter, guys. That's the most important one. Links are in the description. And as always, I will see you on the next one. Appreciate you watching. Have a good one, everybody.